growing strong like the sea, growing tall like the tree. This I'm learning about me, and I like it, I like it, oh I'm getting to know me, feeling proud, feeling proud, yes I'm getting to know me. Read that Saturday ledger. <laughs> <laughs> Why, sure I do. I've been reading the Saturday ledger every week. This town's so small, we're lucky to have a black newspaper. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the first thing I do when I visit a town. Get a copy of the black newspaper. That's the best way to find out what our folks are doing these days. But we know what folks are doing today. We need to know how they lived in the early days. Maybe you ought to go down to the church. The church? Yes, that's where the Saturday ledger is printed. Down in the church basement. I didn't know that. You don't know nothing. Hey. Oh. What do you know about the newspaper, Smarty? Well, it was printed down in the church basement. <laughs> I just found that out. You know, in the old days, the church and the newspaper worked hand in glove for our people's freedom from slavery. And that's the truth. Dad's taking me to see a blacksmith tomorrow. Right, Dad? Yeah, I guess so. But first, you will have to see a barber. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to take me to the church? I can't, LeVon. I have to do a Founders Day story on that blacksmith for the television station. Uh, it's rumored that he'll be closing shop soon. And uh, this might be my last chance to do a piece on it. Can you go with me, Mama? No, I'm sorry, honey. I have to be at the shop early tomorrow morning. I'm expecting a big shipment of folk records. What about you, Mama Violet? Not tomorrow, child. I'm doing my part for the celebration, too. <laughs> Your mother's dropping me off at my sewing club. I'm helping the ladies make costumes like our folks wore way back then. I guess you'll just have to ride your bicycle, Levon. Oh, Mom, I'm not gonna have to go by myself. And why not? You don't need no company to go into the house of the Lord. Did you check the newspaper file at the library? No. Well, the library is on the way to the church, you know. Oh, yeah. That's a good idea. My history teacher announced yesterday that next weekend is Founders Day and everybody is going to celebrate. I'm supposed to report on early black settlers. I hate doing research. It's no fun. I guess I ought to know something about what I'm celebrating. The Saturday Ledger. Just like Daddy says, the local black newspaper. First published in 1905. Wow, 75 years ago. The same newspaper Mama Violet always reads around the house. That's the kind of type we used in the old days. Yeah, I recognize it. Every local newspaper had its own special typography, and that was ours. How do you do this? All you got to do is uh, change the type on this machine from modern to old. And I still manage to keep some of the old type around. Thanks to Harper, the blacksmith, this old machine still works. What does the blacksmith have to do with it? As one little part that keeps breaking, and old Harper repairs it. If it wasn't for Harper, this machine would have been finished years ago. Don't know what's going to happen when he's not around anymore. Nobody else in this town does any blacksmithing. I still don't understand this headline. That's just a catchy way to lead into my story, which says, 
either this community busts itself making the Founders Day Centennial a success, or it's going to be a bust. The people in this community don't seem to have the same spirit they used to about Founders Day. That editorial is meant to wake them up. Tough editorials used to be a tradition in black newspapers. I tried to keep up that tradition. Why is the Founders Day celebration in trouble? I guess because we all depend on Harper too much. When he's getting old. The old fellow fell off his horse and broke his arm. He must be getting old if he can't hold on to his horse anymore. The man needs help, but nobody seems to be pitching in to help him out. And that's why my headline is so tough. How'd you get started? <laughs> See this picture? That's my daddy. And he started this newspaper. There were only nine black families settled in this area. Everybody made a good living because they all had skills they could hire out. As the settlement grew, the new people getting married and stuff, the newspaper grew. People read the paper for news and to find out about services. Services, Mr. Andrews? Well, you know about Harper the blacksmith, but we also had a wheelwright. You know, the man who makes wheels for wagons. A stonemason laid foundations for houses like this one. And old Mr. Preston was a cooper smith. You know, a barrel maker? We never had to go out of this community to get anything done because we always had somebody with the skills to do it. That's amazing. That's why this Founders Day is so important. A lot of history in this community. <coughs> People worked hard to be self-supporting, and this community needs to be reminded of its past. Stop telling those stories and shopping those scissors so I can finish with this boy's hair. I ain't telling no story. I'm telling the truth. Now, people do some funny things. <laughs> now, I was shopping a woman knives the other day, and she asked me, Granny, you think those knives are sharp? I said, Lady, when I'm through, this knife will be able to cut through stone. <laughs> so she pointed out a rock and said, Prove it, or you won't get paid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not too many years ago, most folks used knives that was made by Harper the blacksmith. Now folks are buying knives from department stores that are supposed to last forever. Yeah, I guess that's why the business been grinding down to a standstill lately. <laughs> you know the blacksmith? Sure, I know him. And he sure got a lot of interesting things in that shop. <laughs> yeah, heard he was going to close down the shop. Can we go now, Dad? Okay. Don't be in such a hurry. Is he all set? Yeah, I'm just about finished with him. Okay. There you go, son. Looks like you can't wait to get to where you're going. What's your big hurry, son? We want to see the blacksmith. She's all right, horse. I think I'll pick her up this weekend, okay? Okay. You like her? Yeah, she's a beauty. She's one of the finest quarter horses I house in these stables. She's mild. You can put him on. Oh, all right. Come on. Oh, come on. Right. Okay. Ready? Well, she is a racehorse, but she's only bred to race a quarter of a mile. That's the kind of racing we do in this area. And you want a horse to race a mile or more, you've got to breed him so his hind parts and his shoulders are built up stronger. She looks pretty strong. Strong enough to throw me out of the saddle. Doesn't look like me. Well, she's not really mean. It wasn't really her fault. The owner brought her in there wearing the wrong shoes, and 
feet were hurting, so she acted up. But I seen some mean horses. They got a saying around here, if you get a horse with one white foot, fine. But if he gets four white feet and a ring around the eye, hit him in the head and feed him to the crows, because that horse ain't going to be nothing but trouble. All right. Hey, like that. Nice ride. You want one of these? Yeah. Right. Good job, oh. teacher. Oh, man. How about that? You like her? Yeah. Right. Let me show you my blacksmith shop. Okay, let me get my pad. You gonna show enough to put this on TV? Sure. <laughs> you only use part of this barn. No need for it except for this here blacksmith shop. This old forge still gives me plenty of fire. And I don't think my old anvil will ever wear out. Most of my tools I make myself. Call me, leave that alone. Don't touch anything. No, it's no bother. You gotta handle it to know if it's any good. All right. Say, um, can you still make a living at this? Uh, not like in the old days when that old forge was burning day and night. Yeah, since most folks don't use handmade tools anymore, I have to do more than smith them. I uh, stable horses and I breed them too. But now my specialty is making uh, saddles and leather goods for horsemen. Would you like to take a look at my leather shop? Sure. Okay. Come hey, on. Hey, come on, go. Yeah, this is okay. Lose it. Hey, this saddle looks great. Yeah. Did you make it with your hands? Most of it. But I stitched it up with that old granny machine over there. If you got enough power in your legs, uh, you can pump the pedals. Anybody can do it, even you, young fella. You mean I can make my own saddle? Sure. Well, don't get too used to that seat. You're not in the market for buying a horse just yet. Come on, we better go. Looks like Mr. Harper got his hands full. Well, at least one hand full, anyhow, and that's many hands short on the help I need around here. I had a young fellow working here. He was an orphan. I took him in and taught him everything about being a blacksmith. But after a couple of years, uh, he earned enough money to buy a piece of car, and then he moved into town and took a job down at Preston's drugstore. The young man had a lot of talent for smithing. It's a darn shame he left. Yeah. After Bobby, I thought maybe I ought to close this place down after this Founders Day. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Oh, no. Sorry to hear that. I'd rather be a blacksmith any day than to work in a drugstore. I'll help you. <laughs> Watch this. I think we better go. Come on. That's a bit. Good meeting you, Mr. Hopper. Okay, see you again. Thanks a lot. Okay. Bye, Mr. Hopper. Bye, Corman. Hey. Mommy, what are you doing here? Well, Dad dropped me off so I could get some ice cream. I can't do anything without you. What you trying to do, Levine? Why aren't you with your friends? What can I do for you? I'm with her. Well, sort of. He's just my brother. Give him the same. Okay. Where's mine? What? Where's mine? I don't know. I think she's down at the shop owner. And see you today. Mmm. This is good. See, everyone likes Preston's ice cream. Call me, hurry up and eat your ice cream and wait outside. You better eat up before it melts. It's the real McCoy. You make that ice cream? Yeah. 
think it's fine in one of these wooden barrels. Mr. Preston used to be a Cooper smith. He made all the barrels used in this town. But nobody's used barrels much anymore. Mr. Preston says this one and the one out back are the last two ice cream makers in town. Paul, oh, you do make good ice cream anyway. I told you you like it. Hey, I know who you are. You used to work with Mr. Harper. I bet that's where you learned to make barrels. Yeah. I used to hang around the blacksmith shop. And we used to have all these old turning cranks that nobody could use. So I built myself an ice cream maker. This one right here. The other one was made by Mr. Preston years ago. Guess you gotta be kind of smart to do all that. Yeah, kind of smart. You making ice cream for Founders Day? Founders Day? I have no plans for Founders Day. Why not? Call me. That's all right. Since he asked, I'm not doing anything for Founders Day because I, I don't come from this town. You don't even care? Care about what? Kwame, Porter, you used to live with the blacksmith, didn't you? Yeah, but how did you know? Well, since he broke his arm, he sure could use some help, especially because of all this stuff he has to do for Founders Day. Well, after work, I, I need to make enough money so I can fix my car, then I'm leaving town. Where are you going? I don't know. Doesn't much matter. Any place. What about the blacksmith? What about him? Kwame, won't he miss you? I guess so. We're gonna miss you too. Yeah. You make great ice cream. Where did you find homemade ice cream? Down at the drugstore. Nothing in the world like it. You sure had yourself a day. Yeah, we also met Bobby. Who's Bobby? Well, he used to work with the blacksmith. Oh. Yeah, and I met him first. And he's going away without doing anything for Founders Day. You know, the ledger's right. This whole Founders Day idea is headed for a bust. If you're going to have a celebration, then everybody's got to make a contribution. Now, that's the truth. Right. What are you going to do with the dresses after Founders Day, Mama Violet? Lord only knows. I sure don't have any room left to store them in my trunk. Well, how are you all enjoying the folk music I brought from the shop? I really like it, Ma. It sort of reminds me of a, you know, like a parade. Oh, yeah, that's the fife and drum that gives it that flavor. I guess our folks kind of changed it from those old military rhythms sound more like African music, kind of music they were accustomed to hearing. I remember when I was a child, we'd go on picnics. We made music by whistling, beating on washtubs, <laughs> chairs, or anything that would give some rhythm. <laughs> oh, no, look, one of the songs on this album adds another handmade instrument, the bow diddly. A bow diddly? That's right. A B-O-W diddly. Your grandpa, J.D., used to play one. Yeah. It's a simple homemade instrument. Kind of like a guitar. And like... I used to play one myself. If you hadn't told me what a bow diddly was, I wouldn't have known what I was listening to. There's still a whole lot of things you children have never seen or heard. It would be so much easier if all the things from the past were collected and stored someplace. Like a... A museum. Yeah, it's too bad this town doesn't have a place like that. Well, why don't we start one for Founders Day? Who's we? Anybody who's interested in things from the past. A lot of my friends have never seen a Bo Diddley or an ice cream maker or even some of the dresses you're sewing, Mama Violet. Hmm. The Violet, that is a great idea. Now we need to find a place to store those things. Well, Mr. Harper, he has a barn. Whoa, now, how do you know Mr. Harper wants to give up his barn for a museum? He might. That is, if he thought he could get a couple extra hands to help with the Founders Day work that needs to be done. 
I know some of my school friends will help. And maybe even Bobby. I met Mr. Harper first. You can't leave me out. Who said anything about leaving you out? How are we going to get all the other people to cooperate? You got to hit a stubborn mule over the head to get his attention. <laughs> <laughs> the museum project really got off to a quick start. I didn't have to wait until I got to school on Monday. Mama Violet hit the mule right over the head in church this morning. She stood up and told the grown folks they should be ashamed for leaving all that Founders Day work up to the young people. The kids didn't know they had work to do, but they were glad to pitch in when they heard about it. The grown folks, too. Mama Violet said that the church had always been a meeting ground for people to speak their minds. It must have worked, because all the grown men started organizing carpools as soon as the church service was through. Right, now, you brought some company. What's the occasion? You've been in church this morning, Mr. Harper. You know what the occasion is. Now, Andrews, you know why I couldn't yeah. come to church this morning. Short hands I am around here and all this work I got to do. <laughs> oh, which is why the church has come to you. Does it give you an extra hand? Now, wait a minute. There's not one among you that knows anything about smithing. Oh, well, that's true enough. But uh, we dug up some of the uh, good help from the old days, like <laughs> Grammy. <laughs> and these children are willing to do the small task, that is, if you let them use your barn for a museum. Yes. My barn for a museum? We want to exhibit some of the handmade objects used by the early settlers in this town, Mr. Harper. Well, as long as you young people are willing to put in the time, you can clean out that old barn and do anything you want to with it. All right! <laughs> well, don't just stand there, Grammy. Get out your stone. We got access right. to Grammy. <laughs> right. Hey, Mr. Harper, can, can I... Will we get you home? Sure. Hi, oh, Bobby. Got it. Mr. Preston tell you about it? He told me. I didn't think you'd come. I ain't either. Well, see you later. Well, this day sure is full of surprises. How you doing, Mr. Hopper? Well, I can't kick, can't throw either. Bomb arm, but otherwise, okay. Uh, I just came out to say hello. I see. <laughs> Actually, I, I came out to say goodbye. Well, you said that already. I know. But this time, I'm really going to take off. I'm planning to leave town. Well, I guess it doesn't make much difference anyway. You left here, as far as I was concerned, you were gone. Mr. Hopper, thanks for giving me my first real home. And, uh, I really appreciate everything you've done for me. I only hope that you can use the things that you learned around here. But to tell you the truth, I'm gonna miss you. <laughs> well, I'm not gone yet. Is there anything I, I could do to help you? Now, you don't owe me that. Well, I just figured you, you might need a good hand around the shop. Well, make yourself at home, as long as you're at home. <laughs> All right. <laughs> People worked hard in the old days, but they worked together. And we found out in this week before Founders Day that working together made the work a lot easier. Kwame and I have learned so much about this town, like the places to find folklore. We found it in the library, the church, the blacksmith shop, and even Mr. Preston's drugstore. I also found out how this town survived because all the neighbors had skills. But the best thing to come out of this Founders Day will be a new community museum. We'll be able to display the handcrafts and other things that were used in this town when it was first settled. And after all the work we did, Founders Day has finally arrived.
Come right on in here, Grimey. Come right on in here. All right. All right. Well, I said this Founders Day would be a bust, and I can see everybody out here is just busting with pride. <laughs> to our children, without whom I don't believe any of this would have been possible. <laughs> we like to think that we leave things for our children, but these children have left something for us that would make our founders proud. They have taken this old barn and made a museum. They have brought us together around the spirit of our beginnings. Right. All right. All right. So before we partake, in the traditional barbecue, I'm gonna officially open this new landmark and invite everybody inside to become reacquainted with things we had almost forgotten. All right. Welcome right hey. inside. Hey. 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 Come right on in. Hey. Hey, there, sir. What do you think about it? I made this. You did? Uh-huh. See, and I had to stitch all those little stitches. Well, what's this? What you looking at here? I made well, it. I made this. What? This is what you were working on. Yeah, and I had to stitch all those little stitches. So look at that. Girl, what a beautiful job. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Is this for me? Can I have? Oh. Sure, I can have. Okay. Well, where, you, where you going, Lamont? How you doing, Quap? You ready for some ice cream? Sure am. When you leaving? I have no place to go. I'm already home. All right. Right on. Flying high like the bird, speak my mind. 